Good morning, teachers, uh, parents, administrators. This is a, a real quick video that is going to be the first in a series that I'd like to do to uh, support reading, to support uh, your school start. And um, let me start by very quickly saying that I'm come, David Boucher here, coming to you from uh, Victoria, British Columbia, the unceded land of the uh, Lukwagen, uh, Songhees people, the Kwakwakwa peoples of the West Coast. Um, I've always said, good teachers light fires. We don't fill buckets. And it's my hope in this series of videos to fill your bucket. And the fact is, I think most of your fires are lit. You're back at work, teachers, parents, you are homeschooling and so carefully observant of. So let me fill the bucket. Let me start with this. It's my intent for the next few short videos to talk about uh, what it takes to become a reader. And then uh, I plan on uh, talking about why it's so important to read, you know, the cart before the horse, yes. And then I plan on sharing some reading suggestions. So for Indigenous educators, parents, teachers, um, this, is, this will be my, my suggestion for K to 12. But let me start very, very quickly with, uh, with what it takes to become a reader. And my insight in this uh, is not from the fact that I've written two books because it means very, very little uh, on reading. Uh, it comes from having lived all these years. It comes from being a reluctant and, uh, and a needy reader. I'm, I have a learning disability, I'm dyslexic, and I have the long range memory retention issues. Um, and it comes from having raised two sons who are both non-readers and a daughter who's a voracious reader because I figured it out. So it comes from all of that, and if that's not good enough for many who will say, that's not good enough, what are you, a phys ed teacher, uh, a French teacher? I'd say, well, I have the backing of Maria Montessori, and few would dare argue with her. If you're looking for a real good read, educators, pick it up, just Google it. It's called I Learned to Read and Write the Way I Learned to Walk and Talk by Marlene Barron. B-A-R-O-N, who is the president of the Montessori schools um, of, at University of New York. So what she says is what I've learned to um, live by, and it's been wonderful advice. So can we please get started with the first? It takes three things to become a reader. And as educators and parents and teachers, administrators, we all want to, to understand that kids need time. That's the first thing Maria Montessori said. It takes time to walk. Kids will walk when they're ready. It takes time to talk. They'll talk when they're ready. And it'll take time to read. They'll read when they're ready. Not when you're ready to. You know, it's not like you could pluck the peach from the tree and, stuff, and fill it with steroids and make it. No, it's got to fall. It's got to be ready. And that's just, that's just the reality. It's just the truth of the thing. Um, sadly, it's not what we've done. We have tried to get kids reading earlier and earlier. We've come up with programs and we've, and it's the belief that the sooner you get them reading, they'll read when they're ready. And part of the sad reality to this uh, is that we know boys mature less quickly than girls. And we start to test kids. And of course, in Alberta, you're testing kids in grade three again. And there, are, there's a whole body of people who, who think that's wrong. And I'm among that. I think that kids need time. And I don't think there's any value whatsoever in testing them earlier and earlier. And I think grade three is too early. You can give a, a certain test to a little girl in grade three and she'll pick it up and look at it and she'll say, oh my, the complete works of William Shakespeare. He's always been one of my favorite writers. Give it to a little boy and say, can I go outside and pee in the sandbox with Johnny? Can I go outside and play? He's just not ready. He's not. He needs more time. And for those who don't understand, all you have to do is watch kids come out of the school in grade eight. And the girls come out as they're on some sort of a runaway. They just they're stylish and they're beautiful. And the boys come out with snot coming down their nose, and they look like they're in grade four. It's the reality. We mature less quickly than women do. That firstly. And then there's those that need a little bit more time or a little bit more cautious. And I'd like to tell you about my own girl, Victoria. Victoria didn't walk till she was 14 months. She didn't talk till she was 16 months. And I knew she was going to be a reluctant reader. I knew it. But I filled her room with books. And every night, no matter where I was on the road, I read to her. We called it a bee and a bee, a bear and a book. And I read to her every night, every night. And her world became filled with stories and books. And she believed she was a wonderful reader. And don't forget, reading, and every time you say, well, she's pretend reading, not pretend reading, that's just a stage of reading. So if you've got a two-year-old holding up a book, they're reading, just a stage. So uh, when Victoria went to school, she went with a letter from us that said, Dear school, <laughs> our little girl didn't walk till she was 14 months, didn't talk till she was 16 months, and she's going to be a slow reader, but she thinks she's a wonderful reader. 
Leave her alone. Under no circumstances will you subject our daughters to any tests other than those administered and written by the teacher that might exclude her from reading, that might make her think she's less than a wonderful reader. She thinks she's wonderful, so leave her be. Likewise, no taking her out of class from remedial reading. She thinks she's wonderful. Hands off until I give you the go-ahead. And Victoria didn't write a standardized test until she was in grade, it was like five or six, and by that time she was already the reading girl. Everybody knew her to be the reader. When they came over for a birthday party, they brought Victoria the books, and when she went to other people's house, it was books. She became the reader. She needed more time, and a lot of kids need more time. And parents, it's for you to assure yourself that your kids get that time. And teachers, if some child is not ready, I, I know how hard it is to, to watch that kind of thing happen. Maybe you can reach out to mom and dad and say, I'm not sure that this is, is right for your child at this point. And I, as a principal, would say to you, yeah, yeah you can keep them home. There's no problem with that. Okay, the first thing it takes to become a reader is time. Got it? My next short video will deal with the second thing it takes to become a reader, and then the third, and then the fourth and fifth. I hope this is going to be of some consequence to you as the school year starts up in the mid of COVID-19 and what is the most weird part of my life and how did this ever happen? And I know all the challenges and the stress that must be on both families and teachers and children, certainly on administrators. Okay, thank you.